want to I want to know. I'm gonna run some names. We're gonna do a, a lightning round. I'm gonna run some names. Uh, how you feel about them? Like take like 20 seconds to explain how you feel about them. Um, where you rank them on the top five of candidates that you think might win? Not necessarily how you feel about them, but how you think might rent win. Okay, so we're gonna do one through five. Give me 20 second blurb how you feel about them. The pros, the cons, or the pros if they have any, the cons, and then um, where you rank them. So people to judge. Pete Buttigieg, he is coming out that he's a real corporatist. He's aligned himself with the, the establishment of the Democratic Party and all these backdoor meetings. That's a, that's problematic because they're not just going to do that for anybody. They're not just doing that with Cory Booker or or any or Julian Castro. No, no, they picked him because they think that that's the person that they could rig the primary for. So everybody should be on edge about that because. You think that they won't do it again, you're dead wrong because that's problematic that he's meeting back door trying to with a stop Bernie Sanders meeting with the leadership of the All Democratic right. Party. Where do you rank him? Where I rank him. The Where depending on how much the the corporate media, if if the establishment gets behind them, like I thought they wouldn't get by behind Kamala Harris early in the primary, if they put all their weight behind him, he might get finished the primary number two. He'll be the mm. he'll be the top of of the corporatist, but he might finish around number two. Okay, Joe Biden. Joe Biden. <laughs> Joe Biden is going to get his ass handed to him in a spectacular fashion, <laughs> and it's going to be embarrassing for him because he's gonna he he's he's like been waiting on the sidelines, like he's about to come in and like you know fuck it, I got this now. No, I'm no, that's not gonna like happen. Double Dutch, man. He's like you know on double Dutch <laughs> when you do this, and you ain't never double Dutch before, or you have, and you know what the results going to be. You get smacked in the face the moment you jump in, but you look so confident before you jumped in and realize two ropes are swinging at your face. That's what Joe Biden reminds me of. Yeah, so it's going to be embarrassing. It's going to be funny, but I think he's going to be an important part of the primary because he's going to be a punching bag for the progressives because we get to point at Joe Biden and all of his reckless, insane right wing policies that he's pushed in his, his entire career. And we also have somebody who's directly connected to the Barack Obama administration. So we now get to criticize the Barack Obama administration <laughs> in a way that we weren't going to get to do before in the primary if he didn't get in. Oh, so wow. that's the angle I never thought about. He's going to be it's going to he's going to be a punching bag, but he's going to be an important punching bag because there are a lot of people who are still brain brainwashed by the Obama administration. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be airing out some dirty laundry when Joe Biden's on the debate stage and when he's going around the country. Where do you rank him? He's going to finish so bad. <laughs> um, I doubt he'd be top 10. Well, you know, I, I, he, know, I he might be top the 10. Same thing. He might I be top 10, thing. but like number 10. Like, yeah. And that's like. If he doesn't drop out before he even gets to be ranked that okay yeah. so um so we'll go with five for that one uh tulsi 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 i've said this from the week she announced the candidacy she's going to do laps around almost every corporatist in the race except for the the whoever the establishment fully puts their weight behind so she'll finish ahead of all the corporatists so she's already number four at least but i think she's going to finish I, i'm almost sure she's going to finish ahead of elizabeth warren because elizabeth warren is just as the time goes by she's just more wishy-washy and more centrist than people originally thought so she might even finish ahead of elizabeth warren to come in number two in 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 the race for progressives and might honestly be number three in the overall primary that that's my my optimistic uh prediction of what tulsi app is going to finish bernie sanders bernie sanders my dog bernie sanders uh number one you know there's always that the, the chance of that trickery but i think that the movement that he started is the revolution that he's bringing is going to override all the bullshit that they're going to try to pull and unless they just flat out decide, okay, we're going to change vote totals, I, I, I think that he's going to have what it takes to override the rigging of the DNC and the Democratic yeah, Party. Yeah, I think the one million volunteers is like people That's crazy. really do not understand what that means. Like that is one million volunteers. The, the primary has not started. The first election is in January. We haven't even seen, seen a debate. And Bernie Sanders has one million volunteers. That is insanity. Um, and then the last one would be Elizabeth Warren. Elizabeth Warren. So she's, I, I have a, and all progressives have a soft spot in their heart for her, for the work that she did back in like 2010. And when she was fighting the Obama administration, um, to, to regulate wall street after the crash. And she was fighting for the consumer financial protection bureau, but that can only go so, so far 
because for the last few years, she's been silent on many progressive policy priorities. She has not been in the fight for climate change. She has not been in the anti-interventionist fight. She hasn't um, really said anything about Medicare for all. And so now that the race started, she's starting to become even more centrist. And she's, she has some, some genuinely concerning policy positions, like, like I mentioned with the um, earlier, about how she's trying to put out these Medicare for all alternatives that are the same as these establishment candidates and how she's saying that she's going to take corporate money in the general election if she's a nominee. So all of both of those things are red lines for progressives. But for some reason, because it's Elizabeth Warren saying it, a lot of people are giving her more slack than she deserves. And like I said, I do have a soft spot for the things that she done, um, how, she, how, hard, how hard she fought the Obama administration. But that can only take you so far. It's 2019 now. And she's she's lot, made a lot of miscalculations and 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 crossed the movement a, a couple times. Yeah, um, and and the whole like because all the things she has no, I mean, she's trash on foreign policy. Has always been trash on foreign policy, and so all she has to rely on is domestic policy, and more specifically, what she does to Wall Street and what how she'll regulate Wall Street. Problem is, you're about to take all their money. You literally made it clear. Oh, I think we should take everything. We're gonna be, you know, we need to call in all all hands on deck here. I'm like. Liz, you really That's not crazy. Learn. And she's using the same arguments that the corporate Democrats yeah, can't even use the so uni crazy. unilateral disarmament. Are you gonna you saying Never that yeah that, that you're you're so afraid? And Bernie Sanders already laid out in the blueprint. It's possible to, to run a, a a very well funded and organized campaign without taking corporate money, but you're still gonna come out and say, no, no, no. I know I'm saying I'm a progressive and I haven't been taking corporate corporate PAC money for a while, but if I'm in the general election, I'm gonna take it and it's gonna be all dandy. For, yeah. And and I don't. It, it's bad. They're not gonna me. pick your your cabinet at all. I'm sure. Yeah, they're not gonna send you an email like they did to Barack Obama. So yeah. and it's like, and people saying, oh no, Elizabeth Warren's a tried and true progressive, so she could take the corporate PAC money and she'll be fine. Elizabeth, out of all progressives, Elizabeth Warren should be the one you would worry the most about if they start taking corporate PAC money. Yeah, because she flip flop, boy. What? She's like, already she back in my peddling, and she hasn't taken corporate pack money. So, like, she's she would not be the exception to the rule. She would be the rule that you take <laughs> corporate pack money and you get corrupted by it, and they water down your policies, and you become more centrist and more corporatist until you're just in the the same camp as they are. Yeah, literally, it feels like Elizabeth Warren just does whatever she thinks, like what she thinks would be popular at the time, and it's not. She has no conviction, in my opinion. So, okay, wild card: Andrew Yang, progressive Andrew Yang. or not progressive? Uh, I mm. he he has. I, I obviously love the 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 that he's made UBI like he's brought it to the forefront. But again, like some of the things that he says is just is not progressive. Like he's against um, raising the minimum wage to fifteen dollars an hour. How can you say? And then he makes the argument that oh, some businesses might um, like he, he literally makes the same argument as conservatives, and he's like not taking into account that one, you raise the minimum wage. He thinks that oh, as soon as you raise it, then all these businesses are gonna um, have to fire a bunch of people. But there, there, you can ameliorate that. You can have provisions in there that says, okay, the federal government and state governments, so or however you want to do it, they can help small businesses who can't afford that transition right up front. And yeah. you can have that in there. And also, you're ignoring the fact that there's going to be a boost in the economy in all local economies around the country because now everybody's making $15 an hour. They aren't living... Um, they aren't so strapped for cash, and they are actually a, they can pay their bills, and they have spending money too. Yeah. So they be able to spend that money in their community. So he's making literal conservative arguments against the minimum wage. It bothers me because he's like, "Oh, I'm for UBI. I'm giving everybody money." Okay, what do you feel about minimum wage? Oh no, that's too much on small businesses. Well, how are you gonna pay for UBI? Well, part of it will be, you know, pro taxing products on small, like the ones that will be taxed. Guess who will be taxed? It'll be the small businesses that'll hurt the most. Yeah, so It'll that be, makes no sense. Because they're the uh, oftentimes, especially nowadays, um, most big corporations, the way they're set up is that their services or their products are service based, right? So people doing services, employing independent contractors, franchising out your your businesses to other people, so they have to deal with most of the tax burdens, like mostly. It's going to hurt small businesses when he does that. And then on top of that, he I don't know how people are just kind of overlooking the fact that he did say he's going to cut entitlements to get yeah. his UBI path. Like, 
He's way too forgiving when it comes to the corporations, the big corporations. He feels like we shouldn't, he said, we shouldn't really be worried about them. Like that's, they, you know, that's, that's kind of us, you know, they're, they're a distraction. What we really should be focusing on is cutting entitlements, giving people a choice between social security and my thousand dollar a month UBI. What choice is there? Like, I don't get it. Like, and then on top of that, the UBI all of a sudden incentivizes the government to do what? Cut social security anyway. Yeah. So, so now people uh, 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 over a long period of time will be receiving less and less so that, that you have to eventually force everybody to receive UBI instead of Social Security. And that's just my position that I kind of agree with Andrew Ng on. And now he's coming out talking about he's against free college, too. Hold mm -hmm. up now. That doesn't make any sense. Like he's um, somebody who. I think it's a progressive voice. He calls him a uh, uh, he calls Andrew Yang a dirty, dirty secret technocrat because like he's 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 the the things that he's up he's proposing are just things that just keep the system going along as is, and it's not like real. There would be literally major no change. social mobility because exactly. everybody is getting it. It's like hold on, what? That's, that that doesn't if income inequality is bad now everybody gets a certain the exact same amount of money over a certain amount of years how does income inequality all of a sudden stop like exactly. how, does, how does it just like because if i had enough like a thousand dollars a month as a person who collects retirement from the military it's a roughly a thousand dollars a month that doesn't let me change area codes <laughs> you know what i'm saying like for people to understand what that means if i could afford an 1100 dollars a month house now or before i couldn't all of a sudden afford a two thousand or twenty five hundred dollar a month house and move school districts and area codes because of an extra thousand dollars. That's right. what I mean. So like, or the property taxes that come along with that, right? It's things like that, which I don't think Andrew Yang really understands. I think that he just does not. But here's the biggest problem for me: it's how I, I nixed him off the progressive world. Like he's done. He takes corporate money. He takes lobbyist money. He takes PAC money. He takes super PAC money. He don't give a damn. He's taking all of it. So if you're taking that much corporate money, whose interests could you possibly be representing more than theirs? Exactly. So he's more in 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 bed with the the corporations. So he's like as progressive as you can get is it, while being in the camp of corporations. So he's at the moment deceiving a lot of people. He's getting a lot of support from people who um might be like usually leaning towards conservatives or the Republican party. And they see him in like, oh, that's like a reasonable Democrat. But he's like off the mark on a lot of real important priorities.